ترکم وشکر لی ولا تکفرون یا ایوہ اللذین آمن استین بسبر و صلاح ان اللہ ما سابرین ولا تخولو لمن یختلو فی سبیل اللہ انواد بل احیاء ولیکن لا تشورون موسیقی میں میں بھی تمہیں یاد کروں گا میرا شکر گزاری کرو اور نا شکر نہ بنو اے ایمان والو صبر اور نماز کے ذریعے مدد چاہو اللہ تعالی صبر والوں کو ساتھ دیتا ہے اور اللہ تعالی کے راہ کے شہیدوں کو مردہ مت کہو وہ زندہ ہے لیکن تم نہیں جانتے اور ہم نے کسی نہ کسی طرح سے تمہارے آزمائش ضرور کریں گے دشمن کے ڈر سے بھوک سے پیاس سے مال سے جان سے حال اور اور جو صبر کریں گے صبر کرنے والے ہیں ان کے لیے خوش خبری دے دو جنہیں جب بھی کبھی کوئی مصیبت آتی ہے تو کہہ دیا کر کرتے ہیں کہ ہم تو خدا اللہ تعالیٰ کی ملکیت ہیں اور ہم اسی کی طرف لوٹنے والے ہیں صدق اللہ العظیم تینکیو ڈاکٹر علی Thank you, Dr. Asim Basha. Uh, Shahul, it's uh, you're good to go, please. Thank you, sir. Good afternoon, everyone. Assalamu alaikum. I welcome you all for uh, today's uh, webinar. It's time to move on from want-based dentistry to need-based dentistry. Dr. Sandesh Maikar, in a very recent video, he mentions that of course, don't get scared. You're not going to be wearing all these uh, so uh, these type of fancy masks. A simple 90, uh, N95 is going to do our jobs. But uh, jokes apart, it's time. We, it's it's going to be a time that we're going to restart our practices with a new beginning and some new protocols. The present uh, presentation is going to be based on a very common topic, a very common procedure which we all perform irrespective of whatever type of speciality we are in. When we are practicing dentistry, we do perform this particular procedure. Uh, and I am trying to speak as and I'm calling it a procedure because it is one. And But we don't give much importance to it. Color science and shade selection. Sage selection is a very important part and a very crucial part in prosthetic and restorative dentistry. So today we are going to speak about it and we are going to understand everything about CH selection. I'm Dr. Shaul Hamid. I'm a prosthodontist and implantologist. When we talk about shade selection, we know we are entering into the field of aesthetic dentistry. So but what is this aesthetic dentistry or what is this aesthetics? It is nothing but it's a philosophy which is dealing with beauty. Now, beauty itself is no quality in things themselves. It is nothing but the what a mind contemplates when it looks at an object. And each mind perceives it in a very different way. So, aesthetics has, a, has been a part of integral part of dentistry for a really long time. In fact, now it has now become a subject in the field of dentistry. So it has been defined as the art and science of dentistry, which is applied to create and enhance the beauty of an individual. Of course, it is within the functional and the physiological limits. So we are all talking about enhancing the beauty. And that's why shade matching is very important in our day-to-day -day aspects. When you talk about aesthetic considerations, especially in the appearance zone, which was previously the concept where they would more focus on the appearance zone. Today, aesthetic dentistry is also, is not just confined to the anterior teeth, but also in the posteriors. Winter in 1990 mentions about that when a patient smiles, 
it's not just the translucency, the contour, the surface texture, the luster or the fluorescence, but also a color is a very integral part. If it is to be in harmony, then only we can achieve our aesthetics. A constant balance needs to be maintained here and required between the parameters of the teeth architecture. We need to have a good golden proportion, a good balance, a good midline, and then only all these are going to constitute the anatomy of the smile, as mentioned in one of the journals, International Journal of Pedontic and Restorative Dentistry, 2003. So before we go into the details of shade matching, let's define our roles for the best results. Then only we can achieve what we want to achieve. We have patient, of course, a compliant patient who is ready for treatments, has given their consent. We are studying as dentists who, and if I mentioned, as I mentioned over there, artists, of course, because it's an art and science, right? So dentists who are the artists, they can be general dentists, they can be prosthetic dentists, they can be restorative dentists, it doesn't matter. They are basically the dentists. When we talk about direct restorations, we are stopping at this level. That means the in direct restorative uh, work, it's the dentist who is going to select the shade, it's going to replicate the shade, is going to create that harmony directly in the patient's mouth. But from a prosthodontist point of view, we have another co-artist in the gang. He or she is the lab technician. They are the ones who are going to do the replication process for us, the duplication process for us. So what we need to do as dentists is, go, is to extract all the information from the patient and then translate this information to a lab technician who doesn't have the opportunity to be in contact, in direct contact, contact with the patient. So we will act as the binding force between these two important people, the patient and the lab technician. So our role is becomes a pivotal role here. Christopher C.K. in his article in 2007, which he published about shade selection in the Austrian Dental Journal mentions that color may not be important for physiological success of a dental restoration. He's absolutely true. It's not important from the physiological success point of view, but it is the deciding factor for the patient to accept because even before it uh, processes enters the patient's mouth, it is the color which the patient is going to see, how well it matches, how well it blends with the scenario, uh, with the adjacent uh, hard and soft tissues, will decide whether they are going to perceive it, whether they're going to successfully accept it and use it. So it is very important. Talking about certain uh, evaluations done way back in 1990, where they mentioned that 80% of the patients who had this anterior ceramic metal restorations, of course, at that time, we didn't have much of all ceramics present. They were aware of the color differences, which were relative to the adjacent natural teeth. So if they're aware, they were not happy about it because they could see a difference between the prosthesis and the natural teeth. Coming into 2009, another article was published where we can see 55.1% of patients were still dissatisfied with the color and that's why they have reached the, the dentist to get it redone for themselves. It's shocking because in 2009, we have already advanced in, the, uh, advanced in our all ceramics and basically restorative materials and also we have advanced in shade selection. Let's come to 2016. Even here, in an article which is uh, related to satisfaction with dental appearance and attitude towards improving dental aesthetics, a study involving these factors which are responsible for satisfaction, 42% of the participants were not satisfied with the color of teeth. That means even though we are technologically advanced in our dentistry, somewhere there is a problem. Somewhere the link is not getting established. Our patients probably do not know that they can achieve good amount of uh, aesthetic success or, prob or um, and that's why they're accepting treatments without a question or the ones who are not accepting, they're not happy because some way, some step is going wrong. Probably we're not doing a good shade match. Probably we are not able, to, we are doing good shade match, but we are not translating it properly to a lab technician. Probably a lab technician is not able to understand and give us exactly what we want for our patients. Looking at that, we need to understand very clearly before we go into the detail of today's presentation that we all know 
visual appearance is the key to a success of, of acceptance you're not going to accept a good dish to eat till it is not presented to you properly of course smell plays an important role here you're not going to uh, whenever you see people you like them you get close to them you get attracted why it's the physical beauty that comes in first before you even interact with the patient so visual appearance is very important so aesthetic success is mandatory in fact when it comes to prosthetic success in patients so what are we trying to achieve here we are the fundamental goal of aesthetic and restorative dentistry is about when we are talking about artificial teeth and we're talking about natural teeth we need to create that symmetry the perfect replication of not only shape but also shade we call it the blend without detection and mind you it's not just for indirect restoration it is all it is the same thing right? whether it's direct restorations or whether it's indirect it means same having said that today we are going to discuss about color science we are going to discuss about the shade matching armory of course we can't go into a battle if you don't know our weaponry well then we're going to talk about shade matching protocols some directive principles and some recent advances the whole idea or the rationale behind my entire presentation would be to understand the principles of color vision understand color measurement and the communication of these parameters to our lab guys which will which is going to indirectly or directly improve the restorative dentist's ability to meet the patient's expectation and the concept of biomimetic dental restorations are finally going to be achieved but before i start my presentation i'd like to quote wilson et al who mentions in his uh, uh, article about the attention during lectures that a student's attention or concentration declines approximately 10 to 15 minutes into lecture we are already 10 to 15 minutes into our presentation i hope people don't get bored today in the sunday afternoon and they concentrate uh, if our moderator and panelists uh, want we can probably stop in the middle of our presentation after the uh, uh, the um, uh, the theoretical aspects have been covered and you can probably have a question and session before we go into the clinical aspects now coming on to the first part is color science so let's define color color of test chemistry defines uh, it is defined as a generic term for dyes and pigments in physics it is defined as an optical phenomenon which can be measurable of course there are three parameters of color which are measured life sciences such as physiology and psychology have a very complex uh, definition they themselves are very complex subjects i was bad at one color is dealt in terms of human visual process and sensation in the consciousness of the human as an optical observer quite complicated let's just simplify it so gpt comes up with a good definition which is nothing but gpt is nothing but the glossy of prosthetic terms so a phenomenon of light or visual perception that enables one to differentiate otherwise identical objects or in simple terms a quality of an object or a substance with respect to its light reflected or transmitted by it that is simple so in terms of dentistry if we need to understand color why are we needing to understand color because we need to do something called a shade matching and create a biomimetic restoration so for that the sage selection process involves the perception of color which depends on three important entities we need the light source which is nothing but the illuminant from where the light is reflected on a particular object and we need a detector which is nothing but an ocular that is a visual uh, detect uh, visual shade guides to detect or instrumental shade guides to detect a, a nice harmony between these three important aspect or entities will lead to successful shade matching seed selection and eventually good seed shade duplication let's start talking about each one of them in detail or in uh, not in detail but just an overview of each of them one by one so let's talk about first and the object over here for us in dentistry the object is the natural tooth and the adjacent and ad adjacent hard and soft tissues again christopher in his uh, article uh, which was published in 2007 in the australian journal mentions about a very uh, that 
the natural tooth is nothing but a polychromatic interpret of a multi-layered structure of varying thicknesses, opacities, and optical surfaces. Fantastic. In one line, the entire natural tooth, our entire second year has been described, what we were studying in DADH. Fantastic. So what we need to understand is when we do a particular shade match, we are trying to mimic with a particular object, which is polychromatic. So they have multiple shades in it. I see over here in the diagram. We know that the tooth is made up of uh, enamel, dentine and pearl. They, and they themselves have their own translucencies, their own characteristic features, their opacities. So they are all combined together to form a tooth. So of course, when we are trying to replicate, we are, we are trying to replicate the entire dentine and the, and the enamel. So we are trying to replicate a multi-layered structure here and not just a multi-layered structure, a highly complex and irregular structure. We don't have smooth surfaces. We really don't have a smooth, uh, something which is just a cut, copy, paste. No, not just one shade can define the entire tooth. We have multiple shades within the same tooth, which have to be de uh, described. Other than the shade, we also have certain important factors, which Winter had in 1990 said is the translucency of a particular tooth, which is nothing but the amount of light that can pass through, in a, through and through it, the contour, the surface texture, the luxture, the fluorescence, all these need to be well recorded, differentiated, diagrammatically represented. When we talk about restorations, we are not just talking about di uh, just indirect ceramo metal or um, zirconia restorations. We are also talking about direct composite restorations. The only difference is we are the lab guys, we are the technician, uh, we are the dentists, we are the ones who are going to replicate the entire dentinal process. Everything is going to be replicated by us. You can see over here in this particular diagram how the dentine and the enamel is built up. This is how incrementally a restorative dentist has to build up the surface of the tooth so as we can move from here, this particular photograph, to this particular biomimetic restoration. How many of us are doing this? Are we really, uh, we are really giving our patient exactly what he deserves? may may not be but if if you're not doing it it's high time we start building it up this way and achieving it how many of us are able to differentiate and give a beautiful indirect restoration with so much of characterization maybe may not be if you have to achieve this our lab guy has to actually sit and build up a tooth little by little little by little is he expertise to do this? Can he give this, but can he deliver this particular um, biomimetic restoration? Maybe. Even if he can deliver, are we utilizing our lab guys to the best of our abilities? If we need to utilize, we need to get behind them. We need to give, we need to ourselves uh, bring about different shade groups to, uh, we need to probably diagrammatically represent through photographs, through um, models, and uh, through our diagramat, uh, to our diagrams, so that our lab guys can understand what we want and can replicate and give us exactly what we want. To summarize about, to talk uh, or to just tell about the object, not just the shade is important, but there are certain important factors like the translucent zones which we need to locate in our. Uh, in our natural teeth, adjacent natural teeth, which are going to be utilized. We need to see the presence of mammal. We need to record the presence of mammalons, fracture lines, stain lines, hypocalcification areas, proximal discoloration, surface textures like lobes, ridges, fine surface details, and lustres can be high, medium, and low. All these need to be recorded, need to be diagrammatically represented, and then put forward in front of our lab guys. And even after doing that, if we are not able to achieve what we want to achieve as a form of a biomimetic restoration, probably it's time for us to change our lab guys.
because we are doing our bit. It's time for our lab guys or the co-artists to do their part. Having said that, we have understood, I'm not going in detail about that, but we have understood what our object is and what we need to observe in the object and translate it on the paper for our lab guys. The second thing which is important entity in the color science is the presence of a light source or illumining. I feel this is one of the most important entity. If you don't have a good amount of light, we can never perceive the color. When we talk about light, light is in the form of an electromagnetic spectrum, which rates from radio frequency at one end, which is the highest end, highest wavelength end, to gamma rays, which is at the lowest wavelength end. The visible part of the electromagnetic energy falls between the wavelength of 380 to 750 nanometers. And this is an ideal, ideal range for, uh, for the light to be falling on an object so that we can visualize the color of the particular object. Why I'm saying that that is the best for shade matching? It's because this visible range of 380 to 750 nanometers is the one which is responsible for having the entire range of the whip gear or the color. So if your light has got all the components or various colors which have joined together for form light, then when this will fall on your object, the correct color will be reflected back and rest of the colors will be absorbed. So a good light source is very important when you're doing a shade matching. It is mentioned or it is in all the articles that that natural sunlight is one of the best lights to do a shade matching. But many of the authors have now started to disregard this particular statement. They say that at various times of the day, the sunlight may be different. They may not have all the complete components present in that. But having said that, there are certain times that is between 10 to 2 p.m., 10 to 12 in the morning, and somewhere between 2 to 4 p.m. in the evening, that you may get the complete components present. Uh, having said that, if you, do, if you have a cloudy weather or if you have a rainy season or, some, or these type of additional environmental changes, no, you're not going to achieve that. So sunlight may not be a very good source. What about the next source? Fluorescent lights? Incandescent lights, which are present in our clinics, no, they may not be good sources of light sources for us to do the shade matching. If we need to do a shade matching, we need to make sure that we have something called as color collected light in our dental operatories, because that has got the perfect quality and the quantity of the illuminant or the sunlight pres or, or the uh, the light present for us to do a perfect shade matching. I spoke about something, I use the words quality and quantity. Let me just elaborate that. The quality of light means like in front of the color temperature and the color rendering index. These are two index which are used in physics. The color temperature is measured in terms of Kelvin and 5,500 Kelvin is really ideal for doing a shade matching. In terms of color rendering index, CRI, light sources with a color rendering index of greater than 90. Its highest is 100. Greater than 90 is really good for shade matching because all the components of color are present in it. So the next time when we go to buy our bulbs or you can go to buy our lights for our clinic, the clinic environment, try picking up the, your LED lights which have got this particular mention of this particular color temperature and color rendering index of uh, higher than 90 and uh, color temperature of around 5,500. At least closer to that. We do have this uh, present in us, uh, present in, our, uh, in, general, in the general stores to pick up. Other than that, the quantity of light. It is very important that an appropriate intensity of the light should be present for shade matching. It is measured in lux, and the recommended lux is the recommended values are 18 to 28 lux in a dental operatory, and 28 lux minimum in a dental laboratory. So this is about the quality and the quantity of light should be present because. If you are going to, uh, we cannot use, one point I need to bring over here is we cannot use the uh, light which is present in our, uh, which is on the mountain on our chairs for doing the shade matching because they are high intensity yellow lights, 
which cannot be used. If you want to change them, the companies come up with these color corrected lights called as LED color corrected lights, fancy uh, terms for, uh, for, the, uh, for those uh, uh, chair mounted bulbs. And, but they are pretty costly, 14,000 to 20,000 each. Probably if you do not want to spend money over there on that, you can probably spend, uh, you can probably just change the environment of your uh, uh, dental operatory to probably help you in this uh, shade matching. If you see here, why I mentioned about 5,500 is, because if you see in this particular, in this diagram, this particular 5,500 Kelvin is somewhere near the, the bluish range, uh, blue, uh, bluish range, which is a good cool temperature for us to record the particular light. If we try to take the standard incandescent bulbs, they are in the high yellow zone. They are around 2,500 Kelvin, which may not be a good light source for us to detect. So one more, the next stop, the next point within the light itself is that two areas having two different light sources, we can see that the color may not appear the same. This process is called as metamerism, where two colors appear to be a match under a given light condition, but, uh, but even though they have different spectral reflect, uh, reflectance, they're called as metamers. That means to say that if a particular sample, say A in a source one, they look similar, even though they have two different spectral uh, reflectance, as soon as you bring them into source two, you can see the color difference. This is very much dangerous when you're doing shade matching. So how we solve this problem, the problem can be avoided by selecting a shade and confirming it in different lighting conditions. It can be natural daylight, it can be fluorescent light and probably in color corrected light. In different lighting conditions, the same shade should always be reflected, almost be always reflected for us. Then we know that we have removed the concept of metamerism um, from our system. You can see here in the warm, in the warm condition, how uh, yellow is added uh, to the whites and the greens and it dulls the area. When you have a neutral, a neutral light, how bright it emphasizes, it, uh, emphasizes over here on the yellow and blue. And then we have a cool environment where the pastel colors, where it looks more bluish in nature and enhances the blue part, reduces the red part. In this classical photo over here, we can see how an ambient lighting can change the way a color of a, a photograph is picking up the shades of the teeth in different lights, in different, in different room conditions, how they change it. Similarly, let's, if you see this particular photograph over here, we see two orange color boxes within the blue and within the yellow area. Are they similar? Do they look similar? No, they do not look similar, but they actually are similar. Both the orange and the, both the orange boxes are similar on both sides of the particular diagram. But when we talk, when we have a back color, a back adjacent color attached to it or an env or a environment behind that, which is a different shade or a different color, the, the shades may change. They may become lighter, they may become darker or may, or may look completely different. This is a metamerism. Let's see in terms of shade tabs. If you see the yellow area, yellow range I'm showing the pointer, you see under a dark black, uh, uh, what is called environment. You see under the blue environment, you see under the light, and then you see under a very neutral gray environment. You can see that 2M1, 3M1, and 4M1 have classically showing different shades. But if you see same thing under the yellow light, they all look the same. You see under, under the red light, they all look pretty white and similar to each other. Therefore, the environment in which you are doing the shade matching, both the, uh, both the um, operating environment and also the environment around the mouth, around the shade selecting area, which is very important for doing this. That's why it is very much mentioned that patients should avoid lipsticks, should avoid any type of color on the face, any type of colorful clothing while doing a shade matching. In fact, our bibs, which we use or the drapes which we use, if you actually go back and see in your operatories, they are either light grayish in color or light bluish in color. They are never dark, red, black in color because when we're doing shade matching, 
the reflectance of light will hamper the final shade selection. We spoke about the object. We spoke about the light which is required. Now let's talk about the observer. Well, when, it, when we talk about observer, it's either the instrument which is going to do its job properly because they're photodiodes, or we have the visual or our eye, which is the observer over here when you're doing visual shade matching. The eye is a very important part of the whole constitution of shade matching. Why? It's because it is, it, it is, it is the one which is going to receive the signal when the light falls on an object, the object is going to reflect the light, which it is made up of, the color which is made up of. That particular color is reflected off, rest, rest of the colors are absorbed by the object. So this color which is reflected back will fall on our eye. And our eye is, the eye is going to receive it. The light will pass through our cornea, the eye, through the iris, then the cornea and the lens, and fall on the retina, retinal part, which is the posterior segment of our eye. The retina has got all the nerve endings and has got some special type of cells, which is nothing but the rod cells and the con cells, which are, respond, are responsible for scotopic vision and photopic vision. In simple terms, rod cells are responsible for the value of an object. I'm gonna talk about this word U value and chroma just a little later in the next few slides, but just for time, you can understand that rods are responsible for the value, they're achromatic in nature, and cones are responsible for the U and chroma. And they are present in the ratio of 19 raised to one in, uh, within the retina. Now, where they are present in the retina? They are present at the center of the retina, which we call as the fovea centralis, where they have the highest concentration. So when light falls through the, for, through onto the, onto the eye, it goes through the cornea, through the lens and gets focused on this fovea centralis, which has the rods and the cones, which is going to perceive it as a signal, convert it into an electrical signal, pass it as a nerve impulse to the brain, to the uh, occipital part of the cerebral cortex, where it is received and that is going, the image is formed in our brain and that's how we understand, or that's how we perceive color. Why it is important uh, that when we, when we take a shade, sometimes we need to constrict our pupil. You'll understand it here because when we constrict our pupil, the in light intensity will increase, uh, the light intensity will be more at a particular point on the retina. It will be focused on the fovea centralis. Thereby, the image reception will be pretty good. Any room or in a place where there's bright light, or in a place where there's a lot of a dark, gloomy area, what happens is that our pupils will dilate. And the Hamid. intensity in terms for adaptation will get accepted. Can you hear me, Dr. Hamid? Yes, please tell me, sir. You see, we are getting this, please move this window away from the shared application. I am not able to move that, sir. Uh, could you minimize your screen and uh, bring it back? Minimize it, okay. your presentation, okay. just minimize it. And Min Minimize, minimize, completely. Yeah, the next, not that, okay. Share the screen again. One second. That's gone. Oh, one sec. Uh, you can't see anything, sir? No, we can't actually. You need to share the screen. I need to restart that. So welcome back. So we were talking about the uh, observer of the eye. Now, if something, what can possibly go wrong with our eye? DCNA in 2004 comes up with a very, a very uh, clear concept about color vision confusion, or we call that CVC, where if we as 
uh, as dentists have can have color blindness which is around 8 in males uh, um, in every 100 males 8 of them will have color blindness and uh, three females um, among every 100 females have got uh, this particular uh, genetic color blindness what it is it is nothing but the ability inability to differentiate between certain colors due to reduced cone cells quality and quantity and or there is a shift in the spectral sensitivity or basically a loss of the color difference uh, signals the other type of CVC or the color vision confusion is the vision disorders, which is because of various types of disease processes present, diabetes, glaucoma, pernicious anemia, sickle cell anemia, the list is endless. Even the drugs which are used to treat them may probably also cause some amount of vision disorders. Drugs like oral contraceptives, analgesics, sidenafil, which is nothing but called as a vibra, uh, antibiotics, hypertensive, they all will affect the perception of color for by an individual. Other disorders of the cornea or the lens also can affect and most importantly optic nerve disorders. So if, a, if one of the ob observer, that is the dentist, is, has these sort of issues, then color perception will become very difficult. So over here, they mention about a quick remedy that whenever you're doing a visual color uh, shade matching, try not being the only judge. Try using probably your assistant, your patient, him or her uh, herself, or multiple or people who are sitting, uh, who are present in the dental uh, in the dental operatory to help you do the particular shade match. When two three people have the same, um, uh, come up with the same almost the same shade, we are able to get better results out of it. That's how we can probably eliminate because we cannot eliminate this. So rather we introduce external and uh, external people who can come in and help us in doing the shade matching. Of course, we have instrumental shade matching, which can also contribute a lot for this particular uh, to overcome this disability, which most or many of the dentists may have in the later parts of their life. So this is about the light source, the observer and the uh, object. We will now talk about color in detail. So the color parameter, color, param color has got its parameters. We have two systems that we are able to define color and able to categorize them. The first system is the Munsell system. We've all learned about it. I will not go much in detail, but this Munsell system, which was developed late in the early 1930s, is the basis of our visual shade color matching. It has got three important parts. That is the U, the chroma, and the value. What are they? The hue is nothing but the basic color present, the particular variety of the color a particular object can have. It can be red, it can be green, it can be yellow, anything. When, it is, when, the, when they have shorter wavelengths, they are, very, they are very close to the violet. And when they have longer wavelengths, they're very close to red. Most of these natural teeth, they fall in the category between the yellow to the yellow red area. They are basically determined by the wavelength of the reflected light. The second one is the chroma, which is nothing but the amount of color or the intensity of the hue. The amount of the pigmentation or the color present within the object defines the chroma. In the Munsell system, maximum chroma, which a particular hue can have, can reach in 10 to 14. Achromatic shades, which is nothing but our teeth, have something very near to zero. So natural teeth have something between 0 0.5 to 4. So the degree of the saturation of the color is called as chroma. The third and the most important part is the value. It is nothing, it is, and it is completely achromatic. It's about the degree of the whiteness or the blackness which is present within a particular object of color. In the Munsell system, the value is divided to 10 gradations and the natural teeth come between 5.5 to 8.5 here. It's the amount of the lightness or the brightness an object will have. In the later slides, you'll understand why am I talking in detail about all these factors because when we are trying to understand our shade matching, shade guides, all these things are really going to come in play at that point of time. So if you see this diagrammatic, beautiful representation of how they have three-dimensionally shown color, we have the U which runs on a particular uh, x-axis. Uh, we have, that is, different colors which are present. And if you take even one color, the amount of the saturation which a color can have, that is the chroma. And on the vertical axis, we have the amount of the value, that is how dark or how light a particular object can be. Another system, which is the CELEP system, 
This also talks about a value due in chroma, but in a different way. And this CELEB system is mostly the one which is more technical, it is more uh, elaborative, and it is mostly used in the instrumental shade guiding, doesn't have much role to play in your visual shade guides. Here, the L value represents the value, which is the achromatic part of the system. A and B will represent the hue and the chroma. I will not go much in detail about that. Coming on to the shade matching argument. This is one which is going to be the clinical aspects of shade matching. For uh, to do a shade matching, first of all, try clubbing this appointment on the day before you start on the day of the on the day when you start your treatments. Don't need to have a separate shade matching appointment for that. The day you're starting your treatments, that day itself you can do a shade match and probably record the case so that it will help you in the future course of your treatment protocol. For doing that, we need visual shade guides, probably instrumental shade guides if you can afford one. Definitely you should have a camera which can be a DSLR or a mobile. It's quite controversial, but then that's how it is. You can either have a DSLR or a mobile. And important is the shade matching environment. The shade matching environment I've already spoken in the beginning in terms of the natural light at, the, at that point of time about having pastel color uh, painted uh, uh, pastel colors in your uh, white, gray, and little pastel colors, the light colors in your operating room, making sure that your bibs are not bright, making sure that light is more, uh, you're not using those yellow lights, incandescent or fluorescent using color collected lights, and try to create, making a very harmonious environment. We will talk about certain uh, recommendations that come for the uh, shape selection in a particular dental laboratory would be that the teeth to be matched must be very clean and tidy. There should be no bright colors in the field of view. I've already spoken about that. Tooth shade should be determined in the daylight or under standardized daylight lamps, which are nothing but the color corrected lamps. Operatory walls should be neutral in color. Evaluate the shade by multiple light sources to, evaluate, uh, to, uh, uh, to eliminate metamerism and try using multiple peep observers to also uh, select particular shade. Second, la uh, second last, make sure that the shade matching is done in the beginning of the treatment before the teeth begin to dehydrate or are manipulated though because they can give a wrong shade to us. And most importantly, when you do a shade match, do it very quickly. So avoid eye fatigue. The time duration which has been given through research is five to seven seconds. When you are, if you are, if you are not able to pick up the shade quickly, then you can repeatedly keep seeing it, but always make sure after every five to seven seconds, look at a blue or gray color. When you talk about the visual shade guys, you'll realize over there, this blue or gray card, you really don't need a separate thing. Your shade guide itself is gray in color. So you look at the shade guide a little for some time and then go back and see the uh, select the shade and try narrowing your eye because if you narrow your eye the light intensity increases at your fova centralis giving you a more perfect shade match as mentioned in 2016 a review of color science in dentistry in the uh, in the journal of dental and oral diseases and therapies so when we know that we have the armory in with us let's go ahead to do the shade replication process the shade replication of, of, for both metal ceramics or all ceramic process can be divided into shade matching phase and the shade duplication phase. The shade duplication phase is one phase we're not going to talk in detail because that's concerning the labs, how they are going to replicate the shades, probably a complete, a different uh, webinar on this particular shade duplication. We are going to focus completely on shade matching phase. For the shade matching phase, we have visual shade matching and instrumental shade matching. I mentioned it before. In the visual shade matching, we have the light sources, the human eye we've already spoken about. And now we're going to talk about the shade matching guides or the systems. In the instrumental color analysis, we do we have spectral photometers, radiometers, and polarimeters. I'll talk about a little later slides. In the visual shade matching, when we talk, we are talking about either commercially available shade guides or custom made shade guides. That's a classification. Other than that, we also have a classification based on the material. We have acrylic shade guides, which will help you in removable prosthetic dentistry. We have composite shade guides, which will help you in doing direct restorative uh, dentistry. And we have porcelain shade guides, which will help you in determining the, pro the, color, uh, the shade or the color for when you're doing prosthetic rehabilitation using fixed dental restorations. Now, 
one point I want to put into print that I'm going in detail about the porcelain shade guys as a prosthodontist, but we also have good amount of composite shade types which are more favorable to a particular company. I mean to say, I'll say in my statement that when we have uh, many of our endodontists will agree in the particular panel that every company has their own shade guides when it comes to composites. I use 3M per se in my, in my practice and 3M themselves have their own shade guide which provide us. That shade guide is what we need to use when we are doing direct restorative uh, dentistry in our patients, not the porcelain ones. And when we are trying to see a shade for a, F, for a crown on FPD, do not use the composite shade guides or the acrylic shade guides to define the color. Every shade guide has its specific purpose, a specific meaning, and that is what it should be used for. Any type of shortcuts, any type of trying to uh, use some other shade guide may lead to failure of recording the particular shades. Okay. Talking about some commercially available shade guides, the most common one is our Vita Lumen uh, shade guide, also called as the Vita classical shade guide. Shockingly, it was introduced in dentistry way back in 1956, where they have shades starting from A1 to D4. Here they have divided the shade guide according to the U. That means the color of the teeth decides whether it is reddish brown, so it is going to be A shade, it's reddish yellow, it's going to be B shade, it's grayish, it's going to be C shade, it's reddish to grayish, it's going to be D shade. Then what is 1, 2, 3, 4, 3.5, 4 in this? That 1, 2, 3, 4 represents the value over here. So if we try to compare A1 to A4, a1 has got high value, that means it's lighter, it's more whitish in nature, and, but it is very low in chroma, that means the color present, the reddish brown color is very less present over here, that is the saturation of the color is very less. When I talk about A4, A4 is really dark, that means it is low in value, it is more darker, it is not lighter, it is darker, and it is high in chroma, that means the saturation of the reddish brown color is more over here. This particular concept, you can see this is a photograph of a classic Vita Pan classical thing, which is most of our clinics have that. One thing I want to bring it to your notice that try, if you don't have it and you're purchasing one, make sure you buy this from very authentic dealers because a lot of, um, uh, what do you call, you call that um, duplicate uh, shade guides are present in the market for a lesser cost of around 1,500 to 2,000 rupees. They will really not serve any purposes because those porcelains do not have that perfect color matching when they are doing in the, when we are selecting them and uh, communicating to the lab. We may select A2 and what the lab will give us is something like an A1 or a B1, which may always get confused because our shades are not matching them. Always try going for authentic ones. If you see, this is the same shade guide, but in a gray scale. Why did I show this photograph in a gray scale? Because this is now showing you the value. You see the value over here. It's completely haphazard. You have something light, it becomes darker. Then suddenly something light becomes darker. And then again, something light, it becomes darker. That means this is not arranged according to value and value is how the arrangement needs to be done in today's, well, today's system. If you are going to select the value of your teeth first, that is the lightness or the darkness, and then move on to select the U and then the chroma, you will be able to get a better shade a perception as compared to the older concept before 2000. So this concept comes outdated, but that does not mean you're going to go tomorrow morning and throw your Vita, uh, Vita classic shade guides out of the, out of the uh, uh, window. We can still use them by slightly rearranging these shade guides. How? You can see this, the rearrangement of the shade guide. Please make a note on this point that the shade guides have now been rearranged according to their value and can be used. The lower picture shows the original shade guide. The upper one shows the rearranged shade guides. One point I want to bring to notice that the B1 and A1 almost have the same level of value. So in some of the textbooks, they mention A1 before that. In some of the textbooks, they mention B1 before that. But this has been given, this has not been made by any random scientist or any random dentist, or it's not been made by me. It's been registered in their own journals. That means Pravina Powers, who uh, is the color dentist uh, training in dentistry and from St. Louis in their book, who are the founders of this particular Vita Classic Shade that themselves have modified it so that it can now match our value. 
see the same thing in now you see the same thing in a gray scale you'll be able to nicely appreciate that how the shade has moved from something lighter to something darker you will be able to much appreciate your shade here and you'll be able to much more define and do a perfect shade matching by using the same beta pen classic but things changed over a period of years things have changed so in the early 90s and the in the early 20 to 2000 uh, 2000 the system of beta 3d master has come and i would insist on everyone to have this 3d 3d master in there even though it's a little costly between 7000 to 10000 rupees in its cost factor when it's picked up from the dealers but this is exactly what you should have when you're doing shade matching for your tea if you have this particular armamentarium in your kitty you're going to do very good shade matching for your tea the the system composed of a linear shade guide a bleach shade guide some tooth guide shades multiple shade guides they have introduced but we really don't need them we just need one of them which i'll show in detail in in detail in data now how is it different from the classic is because the value range is more wider and widespread over here we have more chromatic tabs over here the u range is extended into the more reddish color spectrum and it's more uniformly arranged giving us a better way of understanding and picking up uh, the shades for our teeth this is how a vita 3d master looks like the right side is the one which is commonly available there's another one which is the linear guide you don't need to really buy this i tell you why because this is exactly the same as what is the vita 3d master it has just been simplified and rearranged for our convenience how i'll talk about later see this see the same vita vita 3d master uh, when we talk about the gray intensity you can see how beautifully from zero which is the bleach shade guide you can see that there is a variety of shades present and how the shade gradient is moving from lighter to darker sh uh, shades and the variety is more how do we uh, use this we first determine the value then pick up the hue and then determine the chroma in a particular shade sounds simple but it isn't So let me just simplify it for you, so that tomorrow when you go back into your lab or into your clinics, if you have it, use it. If you don't have it, probably when you procure and start using it, this will real this particular uh, procedure will really help you in understanding the shades. Look at this. This is a typical shade guide, the Vita 3D Master. When you see this Vita 3D Master, you have three. You you will see carefully. You will see one, two. Three, four, and five. So zero, one, two, three, four, and five, which represents the different categories of the value present. So we usually what we say is instead of taking this entire tooth shade next to the patient and trying to check, why do we at least we do the process of elimination to the best match, then commence the darkest first, then go to the lighter, and then check pick up the better or the worst principle in selection. That means that. you pick up these the ones which are three ones in the middle the m ones between 1m 2m 3m 4m and 5m just make sure that these are present rest of the shade tabs are kept aside now why m m is nothing but the yellow uh, the orange color l represents yellow r represents red the middle color is the orange so this will help you this is the middle color so it helps you a uh, middle value it helps you to pick up the value first which value either we want the 1 2 3 or 4 for example i pick up the value 2 for the particular clinical condition after that once i have selected my uh, most appropriate value i do not require any other shade tabs present in the 1 in the 3 in the 4 or the 5 i need to only concentrate on the number 2 over here how you can see here in this particular again in this particular photograph you can see value between 1 to 5 choices and then you have the chroma which is between 1 to 3 choices in the in this uh, red color parameter showing low saturation to high saturation is the vertical uh, uh, differentiation of the colors and the hue is between the choice of 1 to 3 that is yellow orange and red so once we select the value which is which we are selecting over here for example i have selected uh, the value number 2 over here i am going to only group uh, value number 3 over there i am only going to do the selection for the u selection so i pick up the l 3l 3m and the 3r here which is 
nothing which is the shades which we have and select the hue whether we want it where whether the hue is more closer to yellow or more closer to red once we do that then uh, like for example i have selected the color m itself which is the orange one and just between the 1 2 and 3 3m1 3m2 or 3m3 we select the best chroma among them this is how we do a sage selection for the vita shade vita 3d master so coming on to the uh, how finally we have achieved a shade the 2 year represents the value the m represents the u and the one represents the chroma so first you select either it's 0 1 2 3 or 5 the value then either select between the l m or r between them by keeping it close to the patient between then whichever the best you have selected among them just select the chroma which is present and you come up with a particular number which will help you to define the shade of the teeth but when you're doing it you need to understand shade mapping how what is shade mapping in the anteriors or the posteriors in the posteriors we are basically focusing on where in the incisal region the middle one third and the cervical regions but in the anteriors we also focus on the mesial area the central area and the distal area so whenever you are trying to uh, map a shade there is no one shade which we can give it to an individual usually these one shades or max two shades are very for the younger individuals as the age advances the shades become more and more complex because the amount of translucency which the enamel is creating is reducing so when it is reducing your uh, your shade of your denting gets more elaborate and when it gets elaborate it's more complex to when you to, uh, to do a shade a uh, matching so you divide your tooth into these uh, particular nine zones which is the mesial the central and distal and then the cervical middle and incisal and then each area you try to pick up your shade though it looks a little elaborate in the initial days but as and when you start practicing more and more you will be very easy for you to pick up the shades of the particular shade matching there are some factors like age as i said and tooth factors which are also responsible for changing or deviating the shades as you said as i said age when we moves ahead the enamel is lost the dentin shades become more prominent you have a lot of attrition abrasion a lot of pat uh, pathologies that start appearing in the teeth so it becomes very difficult to do a shade match so when you are doing shade matches try to do a shade match for a lot of teeth around in order to replace any one single tooth so that and when you are doing this photographic representation of those teeth is going to be the key at this because one shade match cannot completely help you in understanding the shade similarly the tooth location also plays a very pivotal role for example if you are trying to uh, take a shade of a lateral incisor you cannot match it to a central you can which is more lighter than it and you can also not match it to a uh, to a, a canine which is little darker than it then how does this dilemma get solved probably you do a contralateral shade match or probably you do a shade match both for your central and the canine and then explain it uh, to your uh, to your dentist you want a shade between 3m2 and 3m3 something between that that will help your lab guy to understand better of course photographic memory or photographs also will help them in depicting the different the uh, colors and what shades they can add and don't worry if your shades do not perfectly match your lab will rework on them probably do a rebuild up or probably add a little bit of stains and colors to it to give you a perfect shade match it's all about the communication between you and your lab guy whether you're doing posteriors or doing anteriors some challenges do keep coming over and over again this is an exam this is the, how a linear shade guide looks in the difference between the 3d master normal shade guide and the linear is that it's all the same it's just a marketing strategy you found if you find it difficult to do it using that just use this here they have separated your the separated your value from your chroma and hue that means if you see the first tab the first tab represents the value so you use the first tab to go and identify whether it's 0 1 2 or 3 and if you mention if you see over here it's it's all in m shades so it is the middle shade as i told before so you pick up your value first and if you have pick up something like a value number 2 then you eliminate all the other tabs only go to the number 2 and in that you go ahead and select your tabs if you see here under the gray scale in this particular picture you see that 
the value number one and the, the value number two is almost very close to the particular shade. So we have picked up two. And once two is picked up, now only the shade tab of two is required. In that two, both U and Chroma are already present. Using this, you go and select one at a time by the process of elimination. First, you try selecting whether it's 2M, 2L or 2R, and then you select the last power, which is nothing but the Chroma in that. Other type of shade guides which are present are the bleach shade guides. That's also similar. That's that they have these zero and 0 0.5 extra tabs present. You really don't require them. If you, even if you're doing bleaching in your clinics, you can probably always use your Vita Classic Shade Band, arrange it according to the value and achieve it. I, in my clinic, personally use the Vita Classic Shade, shade Guide rearranged for doing the uh, cases. Sometimes when you're doing especially all ceramic restorations, the stump shade also plays a very important role because all these restorations, which are lithium disilicate or felspatic restoration, sometimes translucent zirconia also will be representing the internal color of the root star of the tooth stump. So stump shape is also sometimes very important to be recorded and translated to the, uh, to the lab guy because they will be able to mock it camouflage it and be able to give you a perfect shade guide. If you do not mention the shade of your stumps or your prepared tooth, it becomes a little difficult to get the perfect shade match, especially when you're doing your all ceramics that also, especially when you're doing translucent zirconia or lithium disilicate crowns. Then we have these uh, custom shade guides. They are, uh, they are uh, not really important if you have an in-house laboratory present in your clinics, then probably you can you can all, you always have your lab technician make some customized shape guides. The procedure is time consuming, but probably it is going to help you in doing those finer shape detailing. But if you have your lab guy in within your premises, you can as well as bring him to the chair side and have a direct interaction with the patient. So this is not completely important, but it is important from the point of view of probably doing gingival shade guides, because that's one question that most of my students ask me, uh, asked me when I, in my under, in, the under, in their undergraduate pro training program that, so if you're going to do tooth shades, fine. What about the deficient um, uh, soft tissue? If you want to add in pink porcelain, how will you do that? That is the place where custom shade guides really help you. Most of the top de dental uh, laboratories in the country like Katara and um, um, Dentacare have these uh, customized uh, dentine shade guides according to their, according to the, um, uh, the uh, uh, porcelain powder which they're using. And those shade guides, they send it to us in the form of photographs which we use to match and send them. Of course, photographic representation also helps in here. That's about visual shade guides. We talk, uh, this is about, uh, now we talk about the um, instrumental shade guides. The recent advances across from past 10 to 15 years. They can be divided into colorimeters, uh, color spectrophotometers, and digital cameras with filter colorimeters. Really not help, uh, really don't have much of importance in our day to day practice. But if you're using instrumental shade guides, which are pretty costly, then this is how basically they have. They have a general components of a detector, a signal conditioner, and a software that processes the signal. I want the, what is the advantage of these digital shade guides? They eliminate the subjectivity of color analysis. Very true, because whatever we are doing, we are trying to comprehend with our mind and we're coming up with a shade. So it's really not going to be helping us. Whereas these digital shade guides, they are not biased. They are going to give us a perfect color match. And they, they themselves have the light source. They themselves are the observers. And they are just going to observe the object and come up with a particular um, shade match. So the influence is more objective and can be repeatedly verified. It's not influenced by external factors like surrounding environment and involves absolutely chair side, less chair side time. These are nothing but the uh, different color, uh, color meter, which is an instrument used for measuring the amount of light passing through a liquid. That's how they use it. Uh, we have spectroradiometers, which are instruments that are designed to measure the spectral power or distribution of the illuminance. That's how they do it. They're all used for industrial purposes. Spectrophotometers is the one which is also used in our day-to-day -day practice in the form. One of the best examples is the Vita Easy Shade Guide, which uh, uses the concept of the spectrometer, uh, photometer, to uh, detect the shades. It's a quantitative measurement of the reflection or the transmission property of a material, which is nothing but they calculate the wavelength, which is perceived by the sensor and help us in understanding the, uh, the, the color of the target uh, object. One of the currently matched shade guides are the Shofu shade guide, the Vita Easy, which I spoke about, the Spectro shade guides, 
the clear match shade guide, shade right shade dental vision, the shade guide. The problem with all these shade guides are very costly. So having them in your dental uh, dental operatories is is um, you can say a luxury, uh, luxury to have. But still, among them, the Vita Easy Shade Guides is very commonly used among the very senior practitioners. The cost is around 1, 5, 1, 1 into 1.2 lakhs in the Indian market. Uh, it, it uses it's a digital sport, uh, spectrometer. I just talked about one point about it. It is developed for precise and fast and reliable shades for determination of natural and uh, teeth and even ceramic restorations. It just, it's like a handle. It's like your blue face or your, uh, you can say, your composite... Uh, uh, curing uh, unit. It has a tip like a composite curing unit. It's going to reflect light as you see in the particular picture on the particular tooth. We have two modes, major modes in it, which can help you to understand at one point you can either see the entire shade of the tooth, like we have shown over here, where they are able to show both the Vita Classic shade as well as the Vita 3M uh, shade, uh, shade number over here, 2M2. They can also have a three system, as I mentioned, the incisal, the cervical, the cervical, the middle and the incisal, that three things or the three points or the three points can also can be used uh, to be uh, to be reflected in this. And it is a very good equipment if you can actually have it in your laboratory as along with your visual shade guide, because it really enhances your, um, you can say your shade matching skills because it acts as an adjuvant to what you have already selected using visual methods. It's just like to add up. If we compare these systems and uh, so, uh, compare, uh, compare both the, uh, some of the systems which are present, uh, we have some of the articles which talk about color match between two different ceramic systems to a selected shade guide. The purpose of the study was to evaluate the clinical spectrometer through a, a spectrometer. The color match shade selected system with 3D master shade guide with using two ceramic systems and they found that the both Vita, uh, Vita 3M Master and Vita Omega 900 ceramic system showed a color match with shade guides of 2M2, 2M3. And the master shade guides, uh, with the master shade guide, they had very good clinically uh, acceptable shade matching. Another evaluation of the color replication of metal ceramics using visual and instrumental determination, uh, it showed that perceptible shifts in the color of of shade guide tabs under different ambient lighting conditions were confirmed with the spectroradiometer and these color shifts were influenced by the different types of illuminance present. Another article which was mentioning about the evaluation of color replication in metal ceramics using visual and information, um, instrumental color determinants it, um, in, in 2010, here the color replication of metal ceramic specimens using visual shade guide determinants were more accurate as compared to instrumental determination. The replication of high value shades was observed to be more reliable in both the shade determinant methods. One of the another thing was the lightness and the chroma and the U distribution of shade guides as measured with respect to radiometer. In this, within the intervals, it was measured that we were able to see that the shade guides in which the shade tabs were more equally spaced and the color attributes were much more better observed when you're using uh, a, sp a spectroradiometer. The last part of our communication is about the role of photography. I'm not going in detail, but it's just a, one or two slides on that, that how photography is very important in shade matching. You can do all your visual shade matching recorded, diagrammatically represented, but a color speak, but a photograph speaks a thousand more words. So always, uh, it is recommended to use a DSLR camera with an equipped macro lens and an external ring, uh, uh, ring mount and flash in front of the lens for high quality intraoral macro photography. This is uh, by uh, this is uh, just for extraoral intraoral some. Uh, uh, values in terms of the aperture, the, uh, the ISO, ISO and the magnification, which you can use uh, uh, manually fix it and then use to pick up uh, good photographs. Other than this, um, Coachman, that is uh, uh, Christopher Coachman mentioned in his article in 2017 that when you're doing a uh, perfect documentation, you should always take these uh, uh, photographs, that is a smiling face. Uh, full face with smiling, a smile, a constant uh, uh, anterior view, a right buckle, a left buckle, maxillary occlusion, and mandibular occlusion. All these shades, all these particular photographs should be, um, and various techniques to record them is mentioned in this article. And they, and he says that these are the bare minimum requirements 
for documentation as well as when you are going to communicate with your lab personnel for doing any type of indirect uh, restorative uh, restorations mobile cameras is what we all have almost all of us will have high end cameras we can use these also which are highly portable for, for doing uh, for recording photographs for in our patients we don't really need uh, dslrs well it is a debatable i will not go the topic i'll not go in detail about that but mobile camera in the form of mobile dental photography has shown very much positive results equipment which are used for that you require some mirrors anti glare mirrors you require contrasters you can see a photograph with and without a contraster how beautifully we can appreciate the shades then you need this led ring flash along with your phone flash because your phone flash are not adequate amount of light to be falling uh, we cannot act as an adequate amount of light the light will really help to enhance the light and then you need these retractors these retractors which i have shown over here are c shaped retractors probably the elliptical ones are much more broader and they have better viewing angle some of the wrong picks which i have taken over a period of my post graduation and after that i didn't have many of them so i picked up these to show different wrong things which i have done this is a very wrong way of taking a photographs i see a mustache i see some lips but i really don't see neither the shade guide the shade tab or color or number neither i really be able to see but if i see this if i send this photograph the lab guy is pretty happy because he is able to see some color he is able to probably do it but i may not get good results then picking taking pictures without some cheek retractors just like this and from far off where you have the nose you have the teeth you have the small part the teeth you have the mouth everything really doesn't help your lab guys to do it third one if you see the lips are more prominent i have just kept a shade tab and trying to see a shade this also will really not help in doing it then probably using just the phone camera and trying to record the particular shape again it's not really going to help so these are all the things we should not be doing which i have done and many people keep doing it and really it really is not going to help the lab guys and this is not called documentation one important thing is when you pick up good photographs try not editing them because they are already edited while taking because you are taking an auto mode in your phones so try not editing because if you edit you may not really get the good perception of your photo these are some lucky photographs we taken with uh, uh, with the mobile camera which has come out good um, by using probably good cheek retractors good led flash and we are able to see good buccal corridors and we are able to record the colors if you are able to give these photographs to your doc to your uh, lab guy you can really be able to uh, think that you may get a really good prosthesis back into your clinical setup some careful tips always try using these contractors or gray things because then only your shade comes in very good enhanced always make sure that the entire shade type with the with the color coding is been mentioned try whichever uh, tooth which you are going to which you which you want or uh, intend to modify that shade is that uh, that a uh, shade tag should be brought close to the tooth but should not cover the tooth as you see over here it's covering the tooth a shadow is formed that uh, so you may not be able to get a good particular shade try avoiding these because you can see in this shade type you may have the cup uh, the 2m1 shown over here but you can see the cervical end is got hidden so you may not get the incisal correct view of the particular upper central incisor the lower central incisor also is getting involved so this may distract your photograph uh, this may distract your lab by of course the ones that i showed before are already more pathetic so don't do them if you do them you're really going to be having uh, troubles or your lab is guy is going to have a lot of troubles in selecting your shade and helping you achieve the success try getting something like this which is more ideal finally i come to the summary or conclusion of my topic sage selection is very important stage in prosthetic work and direct uh, bonding restorations so save your time club your appointments i try documenting every step it's going to eventually help when you go back 5 years later i have suffered for not documenting today i am documenting every step and i'm very happy because some of the cases which i have really documented well 2 3 years back now when i go back and see them i can actually see the difference use multiple observers the technique of using both visual and instrumental shade matching is for the best results when it is anterior or posterior try recording shade for every case we do that mistake that whenever we are doing just a crown for a root canal treated tooth we are just doing a single a pfm crown in the last molar we just take it for granted we just give one random a4 shade a3.5 shade just randomly looking don't do that 
record, take two minutes out of the system, record the particular uh, photographic uh, value and then send it. Because when the process is going to come back and be placed, you are going to be the one who's going to be the first happy person that you've been able to replicate to a good biomimetic restoration. That is not just confined to just doing all ceramic because the cost, the cost factor is high and it's all about aesthetics. You also can do that for your metal ceramic ones. Golden rule or the thumb rule is value is the first thing you should and you should always select value first, then go for your hue and then finally the chroma. Photos should be taken, they speak a thousand words, so take loads of them. Your mobile camera has a lot of capacity, so take loads of them and which is the best one, send them, uh, send them to the lab and leave the rest. Okay. Give time to your lab support to fabricate the processes. Many people or many of us, excluding, including me, we would give a prosthetic work today and we expect them in the next two days to give us a block of ceramic to be placed. And no, give them some time. Let give them all the opportunity to do a good artistic uh, touch to the particular restoration. And most importantly, before I conclude, communicate well the information to the dental laboratory. It is very essential for favorable health. If you do, if you follow these steps carefully, you may really have a restoration which is like this which is really biomimetic. It's very difficult to find uh, which one is an artificial tooth over here. Unless you see the x-ray, which shows that the middle one over here, the first premolar is actually an implant retained crown and the rest are very, uh, very much a, um, um, a root canal treated tooth and a natural tooth. That concludes my statement and you will probably have a lot of smiles which patients are going to come after the end of your treatment. Thank you very much. You've been a very patient audience to this boring guy. And I feel uh, really obliged to all the moderators and the, pan and the panelists, Dr. Fayaz Pasha, sir, to have stayed through the entire presentation. Thank you very much for giving me this opportunity, GDP. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Dr. Shahul. Uh, it was a brilliant presentation. Absolutely brilliant. And trust me, I have learned so much about shade, which I've never learned in all my 20 odd years of dental practice. Um, we're going to start with a panel discussion, but uh, I would uh, like to bring in um, uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, Dr. Dr. Saul, do you mind um, stop sharing your screen so we can get all the people on board? Um, stop share, okay, sir. Please. Thank you. And uh, okay. let me. Right. You can turn, keep your video on because you'll be the one taking the questions. I'm going to unmute Dr. Fayaz and ask him to share his video as well. Okay. And I have Nadim. I'm going to unmute him and we're going to get his video as well. well now, we've had some technical issues. Uh, unfortunately, I think there is an issue with Zoom. Um, um, we've had, uh, I had it in the morning. I had to reinstall the app. There is uh, an update and I think that's why a lot of people had issues. I do apologize. It's... Uh, something which is inevitable, not in our hands. Uh, Dr. Uh, Alisa, if I can come in. Yes, please. What I, what I intend to do is, if with your permission and the GDP, that um, I have a lot of references which I have picked up. So all the articles along with the presentation, probably I can load it onto the... Uh, please, you, you can send in your references, but you are, we've recorded your talk. We've recorded, the recording is there. And, and all the references which I have, and I, we can take up all the questions even on the group. I can actively absolutely. I think that's the that's the wisest thing to do. But what we've done, the recording of the talk is there, and it'll be uh, going on to our YouTube channel. And people who've missed it today, you could please, uh, you know, log in and have a go and check uh, what you've actually missed. The, the gem of GDP, actually, you've missed today. But uh, you know, again, uh, this is uh, associated with Zoom and, and their issues. Are you able to hear me? Absolutely. Crystal clear, sir. Fantastic. Fantastic. Right. Uh, can I get Nadim? Uh, Nadim, have you turned on your video? Yeah, it's on, right? Yes, I can see you. And Fayaz? I'll let you all do the discussion. Um, I think... Uh... Can I take the lead, Dr. Mubarak? Please do. I'll just mute myself. Give me a moment, yeah. if you don't mind, so you can carry on. Dr. Fayaz, can you unmute yourself? Uh, uh, Mubarak, I think you got to unmute Dr. Fayaz. Yeah. 
Yeah, fantastic, fantastic. Uh, I think before I proceed with any question and answers, you are f fantabulous, Dr. Hamid. Alhamdulillah, mashallah, mashallah. You are, you are flawless, actually. And I also, you know, uh, your depth of explaining and your, 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 your fluency in your slides were like, you know, uh, soothing waves. It was like in an ocean, just sitting in the ocean and watching those waves come by. Mashallah. Ho hopefully, we see you, you know, more and more webinars in coming time. And uh, as uh, uh, welcome, Dr. Fayaz. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum as salam. Uh, as Dr. Mubarak already pointed out, we had few glitches, and unfortunately, most of the people could not log in. So I think this is uh, uploaded onto the YouTube GDP channel. I think those people can take the benefits from from there. So uh, I think as such, we didn't have much questions posted onto the chat group, but we have few discussions which can carry on. I myself have few queries to be asked. Uh, the first query would be to Dr. Hamid. Uh, what is your take on metamerism? Yeah. Well, uh, to be very frank, when we talk about metamerism, is basically we are talking about an object uh, which we see in one light, it shows a color, and when we take it to the other light, it shows a different color. So um, a lot of factors come into play over here uh, during metamerism. And if you have to eliminate this, we really need to uh, make sure that the perception of the color should be in more as, as natural light as possible. So don't you think that would be very difficult for uh, clinics to you know, fall in that category to get the natural light completely to get the shade matching? For that purpose, in fact, the uh, DCNA in two, uh, 2004 mentions that if you uh, and uh, some of the articles also mention the fact that if you are not able to have a color, uh, if you're not able to uh, get these uh, good environment, because all over the world we have different uh, uh, sunlight uh, coming at different source of wavelengths and all. So you may not, it, it's not, it's a very vague terminology to say that natural sunlight is the most important thing to use. What, what technically they have come to a conclusion that having a color uh, rendering index of above 90 in your particular light, having a temperature of around 5,500, nearing 4,500 to 5,500, and having these color corrected lights, you can whatever shade you pick up, they will be able to uh, they will be able to eliminate all these metamerism issues, and uh, we are able to perceive the right uh, right uh, color. So then, what I understand is basically it it is the skill of the operator then the color perception. Yes, to an extent, yes, it is the skill of the operator, the environment in which you are taking the photograph, that means the operator should have color collected lights present, that general lights, color corrected ones. If not, your, uh, what do you call uh, these uh, wall mounted, that is uh, chair mounted ones. The chair mounted ones are the ones which have got the, the yellow light, right. which is quite yellow and it can really not give you the shape. The whole idea is the, the components of the whip gear should be present, present in your light. If it is present in your light, whatever the object you're trying to see the, uh, the color with your eyes, you can perceive it. If you don't have that component in the light, how will that light get reflected into your eye? You may have beautiful eyes, you may have, uh, you can see very good, but you will not be able to actually perceive it. Fantastic. Uh, Dr. Fayaz, I have a query. Uh, uh, before uh, we go into the next question, uh, I want to come in. Yeah, uh, Dr. Shahul, fantastic presentation. Uh, we were able to sit more than an hour, and uh, it was uh, you. You spoke uh, really and covered all the aspects of uh, shade matching, and uh, it's it's really nice. You gave a lot of clinical tips also. Uh, uh, anyway, we'll uh, come into question and just to make one small quick point about metamerism. Uh, basically, it's a physical phenomenon and. Uh, uh, it says like uh, two colored samples will appear same in one light and same two colored samples will appear different in, in when you change the light source. And how it is clinically important to us uh, during shade matching is, for example, uh, we can see two and one shade from the shade guide looks same in a white light. And when you put a, you know, uh, dental chair light, halogen light, they may they might not look the same. They might look the different. That's metamerism. Uh, you know, uh, that's how, you know, light source is so important. You have explained in detail in your presentation about, you know, different light source and how much is the intensity and everything. And that's about it. Yes, Dr. Nadim. Yeah. Uh, now, uh, just for the sake of discussion, if Dr. Fayaz has to select shade A2 in his clinical office after yeah. an, uh, 20 years of experience, 
and his resident doctor would like to have a shade selection, would two shades A2 would differ from two different clinicians? Yes, of course it will differ. See, uh, see, whenever we are going about the state uh, selection, you know, a lot of factors will come into picture. Uh, Dr. Shah will explain a lot of things and, uh, you know, there is a, uh, a definite protocol how we are going to do the, uh, about uh, state selection just to, you know, uh, reduce the error. So, uh, it, it, it also depends on the light source from the angle which you are viewing and a lot of things like this. So definitely it will be different. But if you understand the science behind, you know, the color science, we call it as, if you understand the color science, uh, where you are going by step by step, like you're going reverse. We know that you have a hue chroma value, but when you are going to do the state selection, you're going reverse. We are going first value, then chroma, then you're going to uh, have hue. So uh, definitely it will be different. That's why, you know, uh, generally we also ask our uh, assistant or even the patient to just confirm what we are going is right or wrong. So that's how it is. So uh, do we do we really have to ask the patient's opinion also in the shade selection? Because what I see the shade, which what I like, the patient would not see the same way in the reflected uh, teeth, which is showing in the up in the mirror. So the direct vision and the indirect vision, don't you think would cause... Uh, uh, a conflict in shade selection, Dr. Hamid? To an extent, yes, it can cause uh, because you are introducing an extra object that is an indirect vision for the patient to see. And one more thing that comes into the picture is that when you bring two shades and show them to the patient, the patient will always opt for the one which is lighter. It's a mental psyche that you always keep opting for the lighter one. So if I start from A4, they would probably come to A1. They said, this is the best one. Whatever you bring any external source to it, that's how some patients do react. But yes, if you're introducing a mirror into the system, as long as it's a clear mirror, which uh, we may not see much, but there is, there can be a little bit of error, which can be seen. So you mean yeah. this mirror plays an important role to some extent. A clear rhodium mirrors, a big, those not the silver coated mirrors right which you have a double reflection yes yeah dr fayaz you are adding something i want to make two quick points about uh, the question you asked now uh, see there are uh, two important things uh, see whenever we first we get into a basic thing when a uh, light falls on an object three things will happen one is you know a bit of light will get absorbed by the object some might pass through the object like you call it as translucency and some amount of it will get reflected. It's the reflected one which we see from our eyes. Uh, that's about the, you know, basic, uh, you know, uh, thing. Now, uh, when it comes to the angulation, the angulation is so important, uh, especially, you know, uh, determining the value. Uh, like uh, you have a patient and uh, you're seeing a patient tooth and you're exactly at a perpendicular, your eyes perpendicular and your light source ideally should be, they say it should be 45 degrees. That's the ceiling. So if the light source is falling at a 45 degree on the tooth and your eye is perpendicular to the tooth, that's the angle you're going to select the shade. Now you select the shade and give it to the lab. Now how a technician will work. Technician will have a light directly under the model and your technician eye will be at a 45 degree to the work. So there the angulation changes. So, uh, you know, that's how it works. And again, when you're talking about the patient and giving the mirror again, you know, the angulation of the light again changes. So that's why you asked me a first question. The answer also here lies in this because, uh, you know, again, the angulation of the light also is a very important factor and it might give you a different shade. And about uh, the patient uh, expectation, uh, there is a classification. See, what we have to understand is beauty lies in the eye of beholder. At the end of the day, patient is the final judge for your shade, shade selection. Remember this. So patient has to approve. Finally, your shade selection is right or wrong. So there is a classification, I think, given by Stephen et al., uh, where you classify the patient for shade selection into three groups. They're called as Hollywood type patients, uh, Alfred Newman type patients, and one more is like naturalist type of patients. Your Hollywood type of patients, these are the kind of patients mm -hmm. who come to you and they expect everything to be white. They just want white, nice, bright teeth. 
and these kind of patients are very easy to treat you can go with a very bright selection uh, shade and you can give it to them so alfred newman type of patients they depend on you they 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 trust your judgment the clinical skills and they leave it to you so that's where uh, you know all the science in computer picture we take all the color color matching and things like that one more type of patients a very difficult type of patient they are called naturalist group of patient who wants sh uh, teeth color exactly like their natural teeth see we have to understand natural teeth are as dr shahul mentioned in, in his presentation they are not monochromatic they are polychromatic they have different different shades and sometimes we have some developmental defects also some crease line some you know uh, default wear facets different like thing so to reproduce them into the tooth with the shade is very very difficult that's where these kind of patients sometimes you see highly demanding patients will have lot of problem uh, you know having the shade matching so classify your patients at the beginning only like what type of patient you are dealing with and then you know keep this in mind then you know go <coughs> through the shade selection sometimes you can really really avoid some serious prop problems you know after completing the whole treatment at least in this part of the world where i practice i have uh, you know i have to be very careful especially females who have very high expectations who come to us and after the treatment during the final uh, cementation they say this is not a right shade they, you know i'm not liking it and things like that so at the beginning only know your patient their expectations and then go about the shade selection a point i'll put in and i want to add in here yeah. is in the city of bangalore where you practice we definitely come across the class 3 type of patients a lot many of them and as sir said by as sir said it's very difficult to treat them they are all the ones who are finally going to come up even how much ever you practice how much ever you do the best possible results for them they still will come up and say that they you have some errors and they they will still come up with some of the other problems we try preferring not trying to do extensive treatments for these type of patients and try to extensively do a smile designing for them because we know they're never going to be happy so it's little risky to do these type of cases especially when big number in one big money in i think uh, <clears throat> the shades uh, uh, as dr fayas pointed out these hollywood smiles which have come out which looks so artificial and chalky and which is hated in india i don't know dr hamid uh, correct me if i'm wrong i don't see any most of the people opting no, for that no, kind of smile not. we have these expats who come from saudi and from uh, thing who quickly want to get and they come up and they say very clearly on day one they don't even want to listen to you i want hollywood smile that's what they learn in english and they come and they communicate and uh, they are easy to treat but the problem over here is the lab guys sir see in the u these particular hollywood shades are not the normal shades like b1 and a1 they are specific type of white milky shades which are not easily available with the lab guys over here locally present in fact to an extent even denticare is doesn't have those particular shade guys they take a lot of time for us to fabricate <coughs> and send it to them so if we we may have the resource to do it we may be ready to do it everything is fine but at the end of the day if a lab fails to do that then we are in thick soup okay uh, honestly speaking see as a prosthodontist Uh, uh we are always you know towards the uh, line of perfection you know getting the shades in the correct matching you now since you spoke about so much of value chroma and hue and so many things alhamdulillah but when the patient comes and he asks for an hollywood smile at the end of your in bottom of your you know back of your mind you are you know what you're doing is like man i'm really spoiling that guy's smile in fact have you any time you know come across a situation yeah. and you are Yeah, many times, many times I gave up treating Saudi patients uh, to an extent because they are too demanding on this point. And somewhere we don't see. As a dentist, I'll tell you one thing, very sir. I have a very small amount of practice, about around seven to eight years, and I have learned only one thing: if you're not going to go back happy to your home and probably share something with your family that you know I did something good today, and you are not going to be happy, what's the point? You you get money. but you may not get satisfaction but um, we have been, i have been lucky twice that the patients themselves have been very fair and they themselves with the hollywood smile they, they were looking good to an extent so we were able to give them something good but there are some of the patients who have because just shade matching is not limited to teeth it's also related to adjacent hard and soft tissues especially when you're doing full mouth rehabs prayas sir will really agree with this point 
that your skin tone, your, uh, your hair color, everything is going to involve. When a patient smiles, he wants a perfect union between all of them. It's difficult, but then... Uh, Dr. Fayaz, anytime have you put your foot down and said, uh, uh, see man, you're, you're looking perfectly all right. You don't need an Hollywood smile. Smiling, smiling, very smiling, very smiling. <laughs> <laughs> have you done that anytime, Dr. Fayaz? <laughs> Every day I encounter these kind of cases, especially <laughs> when I practice in UAE. Well, see, I never did the bleach shades in India. I, I, I stick to the basic shades. Uh, but after coming here, practicing here from past three years, uh, you know, the, I see the demand of the patients. They want the brightest shade. That is like, that's how I started learning about the bleach shades after coming here. See, uh, what happens is uh, whenever a patient uh, walks into my practice, especially uh, females. Males are not that much demanding. It's easier to convince them uh, uh, regarding this uh, shade selection uh, about the bleach shades and things like that. Hollywood Smile in particular, which uh, just Dr. Shahul mentioned. See, Hollywood Smile, uh, it's a commercial term which has come up and uh, uh, common people just know that, you know, Hollywood Smile is the, you know, white smile. See, whenever a patient especially uh, uh, walks to my clinic, especially females, I look into their face, whether they have done any other job like Botox or fillers and things like that. These are the females who really want these bleach shades. Mm -hmm. So that's where, you know, you get a one clue that these patients want their way because they have done a lot of job and they think, uh, you know, putting a very wide bleach shade will, you know, really, really improve their this thing. I, I try and talk to many uh, people and some understand and some don't understand. And uh, people who, at the end of the day, uh, what I give importance is uh, patient classification uh, based on their uh, psychological aspects. Uh, we can have a discussion over the topic. So if the patient is with me, they understand and they understand the limitation and things like that. I uh, go ahead with the treatment. Otherwise, I say I can't do it. They can see the other dentist. Yes, I have done a couple of uh, bleach shades here also. Uh, at least uh, four to five bleach shades, full mouth, uh, full mouth I have done. And also I have converted at least one 10 cases from bleach shade to the natural shades uh, where uh, I explain to them and tell, you know, on the long run, natural looks more, you know, nice. So they have agreed. But some cases uh, who really want bleach shades, uh, we have done them also. Uh, once, uh, you know, you have to, uh, each patient, as, as they say, no two patients are same or no two cases are same. So you have to analyze each case by case. And yes, it's, it's, it's a very so, challenging. So very you mean to say the bleach shade the was in, sorry to interrupt. You said the, you have done few bleach shades that was in consensus with the patient or you motivated the patient for the bleach shade? Before going for uh, especially full mouth veneers, I at least spend half an hour discussing about the uh, shade selection itself. I don't mind sitting with the patient and spending half an hour just talking to them, understanding the expectation and you know uh, things like that because you know after doing the treatment it's a nightmare to change everything and uh, they have to be extremely careful and uh, at least uh, here they pay a bomb uh, you know uh, which goes up to around um, say 30,000 40,000 dirhams which goes up to 78 lakhs in Indian rupees so it's a big money and big treatment so at least I don't mind spending at least half an hour to one hour just talking to them regarding the sh shade selection. Uh, it's very important, um, you know, if you're getting into the aesthetic dentistry, you should know the color signs. It is uh, given very, very less importance. Even um, uh, I, I was just looking yesterday about this topic uh, when uh, the, you told me to panel this topic. Uh, the curriculum itself is just, uh, you know, as less as four to three to four hours in the whole gra graduate and postgraduate curriculum is just three to four hours are given to this shade selection, though we encounter, uh, use this protocol every day in our day-to-day -day practice. So I think uh, the understanding color science is very, very important as a clinician. Yes, Dr. Um, you, add, you, you were adding something yeah. to it. I wanted to add in, from the Indian perspective, two things I wanted to add. First thing is, clinic, I'll, uh, I'll probably explain better in Hindi. Ki clinic pe patient aya, mujhe smile designing karna hai. Oh my God, the entire clinic is on their feet. Are case mila, case mila, karo. Agar chedan bhi ready hai, so che into, che into pandra hazar, aram se atsi hazar pa ya ban gai. May not have the end result that much. But people come in and um, they, as Sir said, speaking to the patient, communicating, talking, understanding the patient's needs. If the patient says, I want a Hollywood smile, okay, but why do you want it? What is the thing? 
patient has seen someone and wants to replicate most of the time this is exactly a sir would be agree with me that most of the patients have seen someone with a smile a hollywood smile they come and then say i want this smile they sometimes bring photographs and say i want exactly this i like this i want this but have they been exposed to various other shapes various other things they haven't probably if we can re uh, re uh, uh, counsel them and show them something thing whether they accept it or they don't accept it it's a different ball game but at least we have tried even after they don't they still want it take consent do your job make sure you do what best of what you're doing and make them happy probably he or she wants to look good in hollywood it's their mental psyche i have actually had one of the patients who came up and said a uh, smile design case at the end of smile design she was not happy and i said why are not happy the shade everything is look good and where the like, doctor i want a midline diastema with me it's very important for me to have a midline diastema you just didn't have it you didn't keep it i missed that point i actually had to remove the two uh, laminates go back and get create the midline diastema again and give it and patient was really happy even though it may be aesthetically a disaster but that's what the patient wants you need to give it to them as a patient any time uh, thank you and say, uh, said uh dr hamid you have opened my eyes after counseling and i'm going back happily Absolutely. without yeah i've had one patient uh, uh, a 65 year old man who comes in and uh, he comes in with his uh, uh, with his girlfriend who's a uh, yeah a very nice guy from dubai he comes in with his girlfriend who's a air hostess and says i want a smile like her and we literally had to sit and counsel for one hour and later he said yes give me a smile but make it look natural i want something natural i'm not interested in this because he understood the age difference between He, him and his whatever. excellent excellent uh dr nadeem there's a question i think in the chat group one yeah, question I, is yeah, yeah i didn't see the question i thought i'll take the question with the flow of the conversation what we are having uh the question is uh, by uh, dr mubarak he asks uh, to dr hamid what are the effects of tooth whitening on shape selection and how will it influence your selection of absolutely there is a very crystal clear Uh, uh thing associate a uh, crystal clear correlation between uh, shade bleaching and the selection of the teeth for a crown now um, when we talk about the bleaching we are trying to enhance the shade of the teeth by basically enhancing the value of the teeth we can't actually change the hue a patient has got a reddish hue is going to have a reddish hue we can't change it what we are trying to change is the value and to an extent if there is a patient where you are doing an internal bleaching for the tooth uh, which i have not come across a case of that but if you are doing internal bleaching of the case whatever knowledge i've got it is going to change the chroma and the value it is not going to change the hue so once it is changed then you are going to then select the shade and then use it for getting your crown done now the point that comes across here is this particular shade a value which is increased or uh, decrease uh, which is basically enhanced by using bleaching it is a temporary process and not a permanent process when you're doing the external bleaching so there comes the tough call for us to take uh when we're doing but the protocol is very clear you do your bleaching first and then go ahead and do your shade selection for your crowns great 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 um Uh, I just wanted to ask, what is your take on translucency? Yeah, that itself is a different tangent. Act actually, Absolutely. when you speak. Absolutely, translucency is nothing but the amount of the light which one can pass through an object. So most of our teeth, especially in the anteriors, where there's a lot, there is a lot of enamel content in our teeth, they are more translucent in nature. Now, when we are trying to build up a tooth with a direct restoration, we have translucent shade shade, which are actually not present in our. a uh, basic kits of ceramic a uh, basic uh, uh, composite kits so we have those dentin shades we build it up we polish it we do keep polishing polishing as if we are going to achieve translucency by polishing exactly. it's never going to achieve but the translucent shades are where the pigmentation is less the translucency is more and that when added is going to give that particular uh, so is there any standardization for translucency the translucency is more is more present for the younger individuals it is present more in the incisal one third and it needs to be noted and presented to the lab technician to create that particular translucency in the form of an m shape there is a diag the beautiful diagrammatic effect because when they do their build up they build up those mountains and peaks with the dentin shades they do a firing they come back and then they do the enamel en1 shades 
and they give the translucent shade. So yes, and the and the EM one shades are always mean the translucent shades are always added at the corrective phase of the firing cycle, after which only those stains are added in. Great, great. Right. Uh, Dr. Fayaz, uh, see, what I have noticed is when you're giving particularly in, in ceramic crowns, and as Dr. Hamid was saying about the translucent shade, uh, we tend to get that opaque uh, line near just above the incisal area. The, the stump is showing up. So how do you, you know, cut that off here? Yeah? So I, I, I have generally come across these issues in my clinic. Uh, can you, uh, did you get the question, the, the question what I'm trying to pose? Yeah, I think. Uh, I mean, to say the layering when you have a layering onto the stump on the on a mono block, you know, when you have a layering, so as the layering fades away, you get that opaque line exactly just above the incisal area. How do you how do you get that off? Yeah, exactly. See, we need to understand two things. Uh, one is opacity, another one is uh, translucency. These are the two very important things. I think you are talking about a border or a line between opacity and the translucency. Exactly, uh, exactly, yeah. yeah. So uh, we have to understand, uh, see, uh, we start shade selection in three, uh, you know, we divide into nine areas where uh, Dr. Amil explained in his presentation all the things. But to make it very simple, we start from the gingival one third, then we come to the body of the tooth, then we come to the incisal one third. See, in the incisal one third, we have to understand, uh, you know, if the enamel is thin, that's where it will look more translucent. Uh, Dr. Fayez, so, sorry to interrupt. Uh, you want to take a break for a minute or something and come back? You, you want to take a break for a minute? Uh, uh, Dr. Hamid, uh, can you can you take over? Yeah. Yes, I'll take over. Yeah. Uh, I think you got the question. Should I be repeating the question? And if you can repeat a little. Yeah, I was I was talking a case case scenario for an Inseram crown or an Emax crown, so, where you have an uh, 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 opaque opaque inside and a layering outside. So, and uh, when the final result pops out, when you fix the crown into the patient's mouth, you can see a definite opaque line just above the translucent of the incisal area, up just above the incisal area, the kind of an opaque line running. That's so right. uh, that actually happens when your lab person has done uh, firing, uh, just a block, he has actually basically done a layering of dentine, a uh, dentine layering, completely a dentine layering, then does a gut back, and then just adds in a little bit of uh, e, uh, the um, translucent EN, uh, EN shade, uh, that is the powder, and fires it up. Then you see the demarcated line. But the tooth itself, that if you see in the uh, one of the slides, I have, uh, I've shown a cross-sectional view of how a buildup needs to be really done. So when you're doing a buildup, you have those proper mammalons and you have the proper peaks which are created. Once those are fired and they shrink back, when you build up, then you don't see that clear demarcating line. You will see a three-dimensional, just the uh, only the incisal edge area having that particular translucency. The rest, it's a mix of superficial translucency followed by the inner dentine layers, which are thin, getting thinner by thinner as we are going deeper and deeper. Exactly how a natural tooth will look when we are trying to go deeper and deeper, dig it deeper and deeper. Yeah. Uh, I have... Yes, Dr. Fayaz. Uh, Dr. Mubarak, I think you got to unmute Dr. Fayaz. Dr. Mubarak? Dr. Mubarak? Yeah, thank you. Yes. Uh, sorry, I have a four year old son. Yeah, yeah sorry. Uh, is it okay, Fayaz? Can you continue? You want to take a break for a minute? I think I have to take a break. Okay, uh, I'll, I'll go with the next question. Uh, the next question is from Dr. Gausia. Uh, she asks if any article on color confusion Absolutely. based on medication. I, uh, I, I'm sorry, I didn't follow that question. Uh, did you get that question, Dr. Hamid? Yeah, I got the question. It yeah. Basically, Dr. Gausia is asking me if I have quoted about medications responsible for color vision confusion, okay. which article is that? And if there okay. are any references to it. Definitely, there are references to it. 
uh, it's been mentioned way back in the DCNA of 2004, where the entire, there's one complete article on color science. I would be posting all those articles in that. And there is yes. a pure reference exactly. What I, when I, I really am not an ophthalmologist, but what last evening, especially when we spoke uh, I say, uh, in the trial, when we had this one, one of the questions asked in the trial itself, I actually went back immediately and asked my mother, how is it that uh, probably Sidnafil or oral contraceptives are able to really change the color, change our uh, shade matching perspective or the, uh, the color uh, perspective of her eye. She came up and she actually mentioned about papillary, papillary hypertension. What we mentioned is whatever the medications you are taking in at any point of your life, if they are going to increase the intracranial pressure and your optic nerve pressure increases inside the vitreous chamber, that is the posterior chamber of the eye, you will have retinal damage. That is also synonymous with glaucoma. The slow retinal damage is nothing but basically the entire spectral, uh, spectral reflection, which is going to absorb, the retina is going to absorb your color or the light is going to now get damaged. So if your electrical system is getting damaged, you are not going to get your uh, uh, colors correctly placed in. So any type of, um, you have diabetic neuropathies, you have so many diseases of the nerves and uh, where optic nerve gets involved or the retinal detachment occurs or basically a cor uh, uh, corneal damage because of the yellowness over the age. In fact, cataract, where we are seeing that the lens becomes shrinking slowly and slowly, you will see perception issues with color. Good, yeah. you, you have an in-house ophthalmologist. I think you have an uh, in-house training on this, guess. <laughs> That's nice, <laughs> actually. Lucky. I've been lucky on that. <laughs> That's nice. shocked. How come you guys, dentists, want to know about? Uh, yeah, just go and read something, man. Don't go and ask me something. No, that's great. If, if if in doubt, I think your mom can always, you know, uh, uh, share the, you know, share your common views on color selection, probably. But when yeah. I was reading through DCNA, I yeah. was very clear in what I'm talking. Wow, fantastic, fantastic. Acquired, which acquired color. Um, color visual confusions. PVC. Fantastic, fantastic. Okay, uh, can you add a note on uh, gingival ceramics? Uh, this is by Dr. Shiraz. Mm -hmm. Uh, what are the shades available here? Because we always and have GN1 issues with the uh, GN2. Yeah. There are two different. There are two dark pink and the light pink shades, which uh, uh, which has been put across by Vigo and Vita shade uh, Vita shade people, uh, which only a uh, couple of uh, labs have them. Uh, one is Katara, and then we have some labs like uh, uh, Hayati and uh, Denticare labs. But most of the time, these gingival shades are not accurate shades because you can achieve white aesthetics. There is a standardization here, but gingival shade guides still have not been completely standardized because the, the spectrum is too large to be standardized. So what uh, the uh, lab technicians, at least from, from what have been communicating with me from uh, where I send my work as Denticare, they say that, sir, can you please provide me a good color picture? We have two types of uh, gingival shades, the GN1 and GN2 which we have custom made for our, from what we are using. We will depigment or extra, uh, we will rather uh, increase the pigmentation or decrease the pigmentation and try to get a, as much as possible color match for your teeth. But they I are not it, really up to the mark. I'm, I, I must think it cannot be as bad as enamel and dentine, yeah? No, it's actually not. But when I see those prosera, uh, prosera, uh, those full mouth uh, polymelo bridges and all, there, we, the gingival color looks really beautiful. And then one of the cases where we have done an all on four with a polymolo concept, then the gingival color looks absolutely fantabulous. That's when I realized that it's actually the full mouth. So you're not going to, you, it's like you're creating the entire gingival shade. So you, it's that what you create is what you get. But when you are, when you're doing it for one central incisor and you want to have this FP3 process is given to a patient, it's damn difficult it's very difficult i've have actually have cases which i can put on the thing where i have done everything possible yet was not able to give that work but yet patients are happy because uh, because they are not having those gummy smiles if you have gummy smiles and you have to put a gingival shade also you are in thick soup thick solid soup great great and the question pops uh, again from dr gausia uh, she says uh, is it necessary for now to rearrange a vita shade guide as, absolutely, as absolutely, ma'am. It is. I should make. I should say using the pla platform GDP. It is. It should be mandatory. I. I have been doing that, and I've got really good positive results. 
and at least if the Vita Classic Shade Guide we are using can be rearranged in the form of value, we you yourself will start seeing the results from day one. Great, great. I think I'll just have the last question rolling in, and we'll call it a day. Uh, I was just, uh, you know, uh, concerned about the, you know, the day vision and the night vision, the four topic and the score topic kind of visions, right? So the perception of color varies in day and night. So you reckon that I we call the patients in uh, early in the morning or mid afternoons for the sage selections rather than so in the first year. of all, I'll recommend don't call the patient for sage selection. You are wasting <laughs> the time. Okay. I have very clearly mentioned, do not waste your patient's time. It's, okay. it's precious as it is yours. Uh, especially now when you're getting after COVID, so one CH selection appointment is going to be like a huge yeah. thing. What I recommend, and it is already recommended by all the senior PI, it's not mine, it's through reference I'm saying. Always take your shade, uh, your shade matching in the first appointment because it also adds a sense of confidence for your patient that the work has actually started. You're going to make your impressions, your diagnostic models. You're going to take consents. You're going to uh, formalize a plan and explain the plan to them. That is the time when you take the shade Shade also. That is a uh, shade which is your primitive shade, that first shade, which is going to be shared. While doing the procedure, immediately after you finish your uh, uh, preparation thing, then pick up the second shade if you're doing ceramics, which most of us are doing most of Probably, you can do a Shade, a BIS trial with the patient if you're really confused about the shade, but not to have any special environment for shade matching and try as far as possible to have it during the early hours of the day. That would be probably post afternoon and early evening itself. But as I said, natural light is really not going to help completely. It's your color corrected bulbs and, uh, in, uh, and your LED lights within the ambient room chamber itself, which is going to add into the effect of shade matching. Okay, uh, I, I think this is more like a uh, uh, mystery book. Uh, it's, it's just uh, uh, unraveling, you know, new new chapters uh, be, uh, after every episode, uh, you know. Okay, uh, the last query. I think I will finish with this. Uh, since we okay, have uh, our, you know, shade guide. Legal issue. It was yeah? a legal issue with the Telugu uh, with the Telugu actress. I treated. Uh, we had done an Emax uh, laminates for uh, for her. She's a Telugu actress. Two laminates. Uh, the patient had multiple composite fillings. Repeatedly was changing the composition. Was not happy. Uh, we uh, she want she was given an idea of uh, okay, going ahead with laminates. I evaluated the patient. We explained everything to the patient about laminates. For just for two, she wanted. Even though we told that that two is really not going to work, but still she wanted for that. Uh, we evaluated the amount of uh, enamel still present with the patient. And once the uh, uh, it was good enough, so we went ahead and did a proper shade matching. Recorded everything. Luckily, it was one of my first cases, and I was very happy of uh, doing the case. We got good results. A few weeks later, the patient comes back and says, I'm not happy. <laughs> and she blasted the dentist. Then we came back, we wanted, uh, we showed everything, we did everything for the counselor, she didn't agree. And she went to another corporate setup where they said, oh, this is horrible, you need to change it, this and that. And she went to give a legal notice and all that. Later, luckily, it was a documentation and the consent forms. And luckily, we had done the shade matching as, as I said, two observers and the patient herself in daylight agreed to the shade. It was a multiple shade system. We gave it and we had all the documentation, photographs, pre-op, post-op, uh, uh, mock-up models, everything. She just had, when we showed it to the lawyer, the lawyer, her lawyer itself said, you can't, you can't go against them. Okay. So I think basically it was one hell, hell of a flim then the other day. It was, it was uh, very early in my career, way back in 2013. I was yeah. new to it. Yeah. It discouraged me for a couple of months. It was my colleagues who helped me in, you know, these type of things come in. Yeah. And the best yeah. part was when I, when I checked back in her Facebook account, when we had, the lawyer was checking back, she was posting photographs, posts, I think they look at my style, it is rejuvenated. It is so happy. <laughs> we actually use that as also a tool to get back to her. <laughs> so I think the credit is still due, I guess, from the actress. Ah, it's due, it's due. I keep seeing yeah. her on the road. Yeah, yeah. I think we'll wind up with the last question. Yeah, uh, it is from Dr. Asim. Uh, does makeup affect shade selection? Absolutely, it affects. In fact, some of my wrong things which I have done are uh, a patient comes up with makeup and I'm trying to do shade selection. The most common makeup, I'm, I no offense to the ladies, is the bright red color, cherry red color, which they place on, or those dull black red. Some uh, type of musk colors which they put on. 
whenever we take a shade first of all we are going to contaminate ourselves second is when we are taking the shade right the color will not get perceived properly because the red is coming like a block always have grays now you cannot have a patient putting a gray shade a lipstick and coming in so if you have a gray lipstick i would be very happy but if the gray background white shade pick up your shade and then so i tell most of my female patients who come up please if you can use this tissue paper and get your uh, lipstick out and then i'll probably be able to do a shade match for you fantastic fantastic uh, dr fayas yeah uh, sorry uh, i have uh, some small this thing uh, Anyway, I think Dr. Shahul answered a lot of things. And regarding the makeup, the first thing we would do is like ask the patient to remove the lipstick. Any bright colors uh, we don't want for the shade selection because we call it something called wash out of colors. We, uh, yes, we just not differentiate the colors if you have bright colors. That's why we don't do it. And regarding one thing I want to add about the previous question, regarding the pink gingival ceramic, Dr. Shiraz asked, see, whenever we do uh, shade selection prosthetics, we do something called a pink white skin these are the three uh, color matchings we do uh, pink is nothing but the gingiva white is the tooth color and the skin is the skin tone we have different classifications for all the three so uh, if you uh, take uh, gingiva there is something called a pink aesthetic score which uh, there is a classification where you can give different scores and you know decide what type of uh, color now, i remember ivo clar giving a very simplified kit of uh, dark G1 pink, uh, medium pink, and light pink. Sorry? Dark pink and light pink. Yeah, Ivo Clark has a, a simplified, uh, you know, version of it. But uh, there are again, uh, another classification gives eight. And uh, I know that the pink aesthetic scale uh, score, I mean, uh, which gives around uh, 15 to 16 uh, numbers. So again, on the skin color, especially uh, uh, when in prosthetics, when we do maxillofacial prosthodontics, we do have to match the skin color also, skin tone, we call it as. There are different classifications like uh, Fitzpatrick classification, Von Lucian classification, which gives uh, 0 to 36 scores. So these are the three different type of uh, shade matching we do. That's about uh, gingiva, tooth color, and the skin right. so if right, it, especially right. when we are doing the complete dentures so all yes. these things will come into picture all the three things come into picture but that's from the perspective of re uh, removable ac uh, basically acrylics fantastic fantastic i think we had a fantastic yeah, general, uh, in general yeah. shade selection yeah. Yeah. yeah yes dr Fares, thanks a lot thank you very much we had a fantastic uh, question on the session uh, thank you dr hamid uh, a wonderful uh, speaker and wonderful in being very open and you know giving us honest suggestions about how to tackle cases uh, dr mubarak uh, the dice is all yours yeah thank you thank you dr ahmed and doc, dr hamid and fayaz for the most um, educative question and answer session so far but i'm afraid we overshot our time i am going to end the session and uh, apologies for the technical issues but thank you all and thank you very much for being thank you sir thank you it's been an honor it's been an honor jazakallah khair to all of you take care bye bye thank you